All right, here we go again. Those are the walls. Oh, Discuss and soft date. Oh, sure. So, here we go. New game. Replay with replay. And Death World Marathon. And let's see if we can find a map. As always, I'm looking for something a bit more green, preferably. source patches here and there's also some nice iron close by but yeah, it's very close to these nests so I don't think I like that one now this might be something these lakes are very nice these are a bit spread out but I think can be managed and there's a lot of nice trees here to block a lot of pollution and th these are the closest and they're kind of far away still and there is lots of iron nearby and there's some oil nearby yeah i hope you like this map already maybe i just go with this one So what about everything else? Where's the stone here? The stone is in there, which is a bit awkward. But that's probably okay. I'm gonna need grenades to actually clear the path in order to access it. Hmm. But I guess I can probably have grenades by then. It's not too difficult to reach grenades. And these cliffs are actually making this an even tighter choke than it looks like. So defending that is not going to be a problem at all. But yeah, this is a bit harder to defend, of course. But then again, I think I won't actually need to expand quite that much in the early game here, because I already have these very nice and big iron patches nearby. Even some forests to shield pollution this way. Yeah, I think I like this map. Again, lots of nice trees around here. Even pretty close to, to between the water and the coal. Yeah, let's go. This is looking pretty good. all the iron and then we can disable walking set some of these up let's see where are the remaining plates there that's all the plants okay now i need to mine coal Getting kind of tedious at this point. But I will manage.
set up some hotkeys. to build up the coal. And yeah, in order to mine that coal I need at a minimum 18 coal in here. So I'm gonna go with like 25 so I have a bit extra. that we need. So time for some design, as usual. I'm starting to like the, uh, the folded kind of base layout where you build the furnaces, something like this, and then so resources come in from the bottom in this case and go out the top, and then you fold around the base and build the assemblers like over here, instead of um, straight in a line like this. I'm starting to really like that kind of base layout because it keeps everything nice and compact makes it easy to move around. So I think I want to do that here too. And question then is which direction does the coal come from? But I guess I before I set that up I can start doing a bit more here just to get a better sense of how wide this will be in the end with the steel furnaces and everything. So then it's going to be like that. Yeah, now the direction actually becomes significant. Okay, and that's how wide it's going to be. So I can fit that in here, if I want to. I can also build it like this. Are these cliffs? I think those are cliffs. So I could build it like this, and then I can fit some assemblers here. Uh, they are going to spill over into the coal patch though. So I would like to be able to like build assemblers here and then science this way preferably. Time to empty that. So how else could I lay this out? I 
could do it like this, maybe. Uh, assemblers here and signs down this way. But then again, they're going to spill over into here. So yeah, this one is a bit tricky. Maybe I just do it like this. Yeah, that gives some space to spill over here without colliding with the coal mine. And then I can do signs down here, maybe. other maybe I can do it like this it's going to collide with the forest and everything up here and the wreck hmm. so then again that is quite a lot of space but yeah it's not gonna last long is it I think this is probably the best option right now I go like up here, then I can do like, science down this way, but like maybe angle down. Yes, yeah, something like that. I'm going to start mapping out the the assemblers first here, so that I can get a better sense of how this is going to be. I think this time I'll leave one space and then the transport belt and then just have maybe one belt of space and then the chests and assemblers and everything there. I should actually leave probably two belts of space even. So it'll be like this in terms of space. And this time I'll do long inserters here. And also this way. And like that. So that's the space I have. That I need to stay within. About halfway there on the coal. So yeah, uh, like this. So this needs to come up one tile that and then we'll have circuits on this side That's copper. Uh, 
And then input input. Like that. And then some space. And then place that here. So let's see here, that's belt, belt, belt. What do we usually put here, is it? I think it's just steam engines, boilers, furnaces, or actually steam engines, pipes, boilers, furnaces. And here it is, like ammo, miners, inserter, one, two, three, four, and then turrets, repair packs, radars. that comes mm, power poles yeah that's pretty good spot for break <laughs> so we'll put a spacer here and then we can maybe do some more up here So let's see here then. Can I make this not collide with the cop or the coal mine? Just barely it seems. So something like that might work. I think I like this layout. So that means coal is going to be coming in from this side and going through here. Like this. What's this doing? Just about to be done. more space here actually. So I need to place it somewhere that has that much iron. There is fine. And now we chop wood for a bit here.
180k. It's not a huge iron patch. But we'll get us some on the way to what we need. If you watched the last attempt at this, one of the reasons I uh, lost that one is because I ran out of iron. And I was just about to expand to take another much bigger iron patch. But yeah, I died while attempting to do so. In part because I didn't have enough iron to research another damage upgrade. Which would have about doubled my damage against big biters. Which might have made all the difference in that fight. So between uh, streams now I have done the math and concluded that um, uh, for one thing um, damage just increases very quickly with the higher levels because the, uh, the bonuses between uh, Ammo damage and turret damage actually stack multiplicatively instead of uh, additively. Which means that the damage actually goes up as almost like the square of, of uh, the damage bonus level. And even a bit faster because it starts out at 10% and then moves on to 20% per, per research level. So, and because of that actually, yellow ammo is a lot more iron efficient than red ammo, even from, at least from medium biters and, and even for some of the big biters, until you get to like really high levels So actually the more you increase damage research, the better the uh, uh, the better the efficiency of yellow ammo gets compared to red ammo. And of course, time to kill is l a lot longer with yellow ammo. But yeah, I probably won't be quite as aggressive with the red ammo this time, just because yellow ammo for at least for a good bit of the medium biter phase is yellow ammo is a bit more efficient. So I might stay on that for longer. Oh, and now I'm really actually chopping a lot of wood here. Much more than I usually do, just because these were in the way here. But yeah, that clears that up. worth of mining. And this is 50, so it's getting another 12. Yeah, getting another 12. And now I need to move a bit that way. Or actually maybe not. It's nice if I can still reach these. I cannot. So I move these a bit closer. Still can't see the whole thing in that view. Okay. Uh, at least I can do this. Um. All right. So, I need to leave a bit more space between them. So that I can fit some belts down the middle. Are these on top of the coal now? Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's gonna butt, butt up against the wreck. I guess that's gonna have to be fine. Can put a belt or underground belt there. Yes, it's gonna be fine. Let's grab that and continue here. So let's see here. I'm gonna need to fit a personal transport belt down the middle here. So question here. I guess I will have to run. Iron like this and pull the coal in this way. Something like this. unusual but I guess it's gonna work and here it's going to be coal in from this side See if I can do the power poles. Can I place it anywhere? <laughs> there it barely fits. Okay. The 
we also need a buffer here. Output. These I think are covered already. Yep. Right. some of this stuff here. Okay, so let's see, these I think are done. Yep. So then let's see here. It's going to be ammo. And these are belts. And then this is steam engines. This is pipes. Boilers and furnaces. Yeah, these don't need anything from this side. So we have this needs iron, this needs iron and gears. So that's furnaces. Uh, let's play some. Holes. Yeah, let's keep them in line. Like this, I can run a belt here if needed. And those almost all have everything. That should be all. And on this side, that's miners and assemblers. This is long inserters. Normal and fast inserters. And let's see here. Then this one needs to also go up this way, or filter inserters. And then this is usually turrets, which needs copper and iron and gears. And then repair packs only needs this one. And then we have radars. And up here, iron sticks. Poles of two varieties. And yep. That'll do the early mall. And then up here we can do some uh, fluid 
stuff. Let's get rid of all this. Place this back there. Let's do some time to go there, so let's do some science. Red science. And then we have green. That's then gear, gear. Circuit, wire, 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 wire. Copper, make that. Not cover both of those here. Can I do this more efficiently? Need one there, one there. We need two more poles. All right, and this should be everything I need there. Could even make this a tiny bit more compact. But I will not bother, I think. What else needs some splitters here? So that's gonna be iron. And that's gonna be copper. Let's rotate that nicely. And then put that into the library. Still some time to go. Can do some military as well. So how did I decide? I think I decided I need 10 of these for the science itself and then I need 
nine assemblers for for uh, grenades. Uh, strictly, I only need eight grenade assemblers. This also gives me a bit of surplus. surplus up here, which is going to be coming from this side, and these are going to have input here. Of iron plates and coal. Also going to feed into these assemblers of red ammo. steel and finally on this side we'll do walls stone bricks. That I think is the whole military size build. And this goes here. And yeah, and this will be the surplus of walls and red ammo. Maybe I even actually want a bit of output of yellow ammo if, if I'm going to be using that. I guess I can put some of those down here. These aren't actually going to be fed fully by this belt. Each of these takes two per second. These take, so that's nine. Working full speed, they're going to be consuming what? They're going to be consuming two and a half iron plates per second. Which means, yeah, that's five and a half, so I can only really feed one more if these are working full speed on one yellow belt. Hmm. I could always just run in the second one this way. But on the other hand, I'm not really going to have enough iron production at the beginning of the game to really support that anyway. 
So I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Right, let's put that into library. Now I just need to wait for this for slightly longer. for the lab and the science. Anything else I can do? I can do fire pipes for the boiler and pump. And that I think is all I can do right now. Here I need 14 at minimum, so that's 14. Let's do 6 coal or copper extra. No? Coal, yeah. Coal, mining copper. So I just need to wait for that. And yeah. I guess I can prepare some. some. Uh, blue science, but before that I'm... Think, oh yeah, I should also do one of these. Turret boxes. That's going to be useful too. And we need this to snap to 6 by 6. I could do some blue science preparation, but I think it probably makes more sense actually to set up some engines and uh, long extensions. I which I need to be able to see this down here. at least. Put it here, somewhere. This is going to be making pipes and gears. Actually, the gears go on the other side because I don't need a, th those on the belt. Uh, what we will be having 
I think at this point I will have medium power poles, so I can use those. So let's place some of those there. Ten circuits for the lab. So that's going to be pipes. Outputting over here. Actually, that probably only needs one. Yeah. I can actually do that with one of those. So it's going to be iron input, and then we have pipes output there. And then we can do engines down this way. to go on the other side here. Like that. And we can input and output on the same belts. Let's move those down to be symmetrical. And there we have some engines. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, steel is going to be coming in there. Another three circuits for the assembler we need eventually. I think I clicked 10 times, but it only queued 9, so I'm gonna wait for that to finish before I queue anymore. Just in case. Uh, so then that is... Uh, that is pipes and engines. Probably actually want a buffer there. So yeah, that is copper. Actually, maybe have copper and just grab from there instead of on this side. Hmm. Okay, I need one more. So either way that is engines and then I can just set up a bunch of more assemblers and stuff here once I need it. Hmm. So I could just put uh, copper and steel on this here. So then I need... I would need more inserters than I can fit here, basically. So yeah, let's keep it on that side, I think. But I only really need it from here on. So I could just do it on this side. Well, there, yeah, I also need the copper there, I guess. So I guess this is going to have to split. Let's 
somewhere, somehow. Let's figure that out later. So that's going to be the engines at home. Let's just wait for this to finish and then move on to stone. Because I don't think there are any better stone patches here. No. So I guess I'm going to need to chop a few more trees here. So I'm going to have much more wood in this game than I usually do. stone I only need to mine how much I need to mine eight coals worth so that's eight coal and five six seven extra to have a few more um, furnaces well, I guess I'm going to also need one more gear for the lab. Oh, and then also five more for the assembler. Yeah, now the boiler and the lab should be the only handcrafts remaining, I think. And the assembler, so three. Oh no, I put coal in there. Whoops. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna need to mine 18 more. Ugh, that was clumsy. figure out how I get back out of here. Can I go through here? Yeah, I can. Okay. 
So we have 12 calls worth of time. Maybe I can improve a bit on this in that time. Maybe not. Yeah, I think this is probably pretty good. Might need to add some more engine assemblers, but yeah, we'll see. Could do some blue signs, I guess. If there's space. I don't think there's enough space here. No, not really. Okay, so I'm gonna do that later. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else I need to... Oh, I guess some power, actually. It's always good to have. But yeah, I can't really do, do the whole thing with the vision I have. So let's just leave that there for now. I guess I could do it in the forest. It's a full 40. some added turret coverage and also some paths to get through it. Split it up a bit. prepare some blue stuff but no I'll do that later it's gonna be probably like at least 12 hours before I get there anyway and I might not get there <laughs> in this attempt hopefully I do but judging by history so far it's kind of more likely that I don't be able to support quite a lot of miners 
of these. So another 30 seconds or so of mining, and then we can go research automation. And then start automating. So yeah, power will go here, for starters at least, maybe even permanently. This like one two three four five one two three four five one two okay I probably need to put it there so let's go this. hello Gizard so stream title and Thought, hmm, they must use a mod where they start with a car or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I am starting with uh, a mode of transportation. Anyway, but yeah, hello, welcome to the stream. If you want to read some more about what this challenge is, uh, there is uh, an info panel in stream info with all the, ru the rules that I'm playing by. It's not like there is like an official rule set for this or anything. It's just a challenge that I have concocted for myself. Uh, okay, now I need to pick up all the belts. I need to recycle the furnace into a boiler and make a lab out of the belts. And research. Let's 
see here, for the smelting I need to do to make one more miner, or to make two iron miners. Oh. Yeah, two more miners, electric miners, is the word I was looking for. I need a five coal per each. So that should be enough to make me two additional miners. So how many hours have I put into the challenge so far? Um, good question. Uh, the, the the attempts that I've taken or that I've got on the long the farthest have taken about 10 to 12 hours or so. And I think I have had like three attempts that made it that far, so that's like 30, so I've in total probably something like 60 hours or so on this challenge, something around there. But that is only counting the most recent um, bunch of attempts, which is basically since around the beginning of March, I think. Uh, I have attempted this challenge before, like about a year ago or so. But at that point I didn't do it on stream. Uh, so yeah, in total maybe like a hundred hours or something so far. Animation finished. Good. Next technology is going to be turrets. Which we're not going to make just yet. Okay. That is the last handcraft we're doing and no more intermediates in the inventory means I did not mess it up. Trying to unbind the crafting controls and make wires. And first of all, belts, actually. Because otherwise I cannot move anymore. It would be quite awkward to get myself stranded here because I run, run out of power. Then again, I do have a lot of uh, wood, so that wouldn't really be a, an issue, but anyway. Just read your rules, no car allowed, man. I know people set themselves lofty goals in games, but this seems almost masochistic. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, I guess I just enjoy a challenge. I don't know yet if this challenge is even possible. It might be impossible, but I'm getting close enough that I think it's quite doable. Certainly if I were like a better speedrunner, I haven't like really put any tr practice or anything into speedrunning. I don't actually even have the achievement for it. Um, if I were like better at those kinds of things, I think this would certainly be quite doable. And of course many speedrun strategies probably don't transfer very, very well onto this because yes, as you can see I can't move. Uh, so moving around would be quite a bit more difficult. But I think a lot of the skills probably transfer at least. So let's see here, I need 10 gears to make one miner, so I'm gonna do that first to make sure I don't run out here. So yeah, the, this is not going to be enough to make another miner right away. So let's just make some poles. The rest, yeah, no, I don't have enough to make another miner again, so I'm just going to probably just turn all of this into poles. Hello, the Levin Fox. It's taking the nasty setting and then making it worse, yeah? <laughs> Oh, we can combine it with Lazy Bastard with the last enough in default. Yeah, I have done that before. Or, I'm not sure if I did that as Lazy Bastard, I think I probably did. Uh, but that was on default settings and not Marathon Death World. So I, had, I have done a you no know, walking challenge before and on default settings it's not even that difficult. I did it in my first try, I think. But yeah, Marathon Death World is definitely a lot more challenging. I like the idea of minimal handcrafting, yeah. I need 
to the game, like just automated purple science, yeah. Yeah, the of course the, the whole thing is uh, on the most fundamental level inspired by the lazy bastard achievement. But then a few years ago someone in the Factorio subreddit had the bright idea that hey, actually start with enough iron in your inventory to craft one set of uh, transport belts. So you don't actually, well, in theory, you don't need to take a single step in order to complete the game. So yeah, that's what I did the first time I did the challenge, uh, because that was way back in like 0.17, I think, when uh, so that was before uh, before the wreck was at the beginning. So you actually started with all of the iron plates in your inventory. So back then it, it was possible to not even take a single step, even at the beginning of the game. Whereas now you actually do need to take a few steps at the beginning to collect the iron plates. Just to get started on the belts. Uh, so let's see here, I think I'm actually first going to mine a bit of coal. Uh, or actually maybe not, because I probably have enough anyway. So let's see, first I need a bit of iron and, and then I need a bit more copper as well. Actually I have enough to make a second miner already. But yeah, I am going to need more coal to smelt the stuff for a third miner. Achievement? Uh, yeah, a lazy bastard is an achievement. Uh, right. I'm not sure if I have it because these keep resetting all the time. Yeah, here this one. Win the game by manually crafting no more than 111 items. And uh, that is not possible in marathon because you need more handcraft than that just to get to automation. I think it's 143 total. Um, but yeah, in default settings it is possible, and you even have a bit of leeway. Uh, back in earlier versions it was a bit more of a puzzle, because then the most basic assemblers couldn't have more... They couldn't use more than, I th think it was two ingredients for the most basic assembler. And then uh, assembler mark two bumps that up to ingredients. Um, so there were a couple of things that you still had to handcraft even after you, after you got automation technology. Uh, like the first uh, Mark II assembler and the first um, uh, the first oil refinery. So I think at that point you couldn't actually craft more or you couldn't um, uh, you couldn't automate uh, oil refiner production without uh, assembler mark three, I believe, which made the game a bit more of a puzzle. And unfortunately, they removed that aspect of it in somewhere back in like zero point eighteen, maybe. So now these recipes can have more than two ingredients. But yeah, it's still it's a it's a very enjoyable way to play the game. Uh, I think just to never handcraft anything other than the very basic things you need to enable <laughs> just to enable yourself to never handcraft again. Hello, empty Bran. I'm playing around with doing a 100% run and the lazy bastard is getting on tra track like a pro combo. It's a big challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. That one is probably like on the borderline of even possible. 
Because I think you have... Yeah, you have a, a bit of leeway in... Well, like someone here said, I think it was... Yeah, the Love and Fox said, I think, 103. Yeah, so I think you have a leeway of, like, maybe one extra burner mining drill and one extra f stone furnace. Um, so you can increase production by a little bit, but not by a whole lot, before you run into... Um, just not being possible anymore because you need more production of stuff than you can produce in the time. <laughs> but yeah, it's... My gut feeling is it's probably possible to do getting on track like a pro with Lazy Bastard in default settings. But I'm not sure. It might be impossible. Like, actually impossible, because you cannot produce that much in that time. It might be. We need to bring these power poles up to the coal or copper. And... I think I'll do it in a nice and straight line here. I am under a bit of pressure, or time pressure, because evolution does increase with time at a very slow rate. But the uh, pollution factor is much more significant, so I think I can take take my time here. Let's see, you can use the furnace you need for the boiler until you need it. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I was doing this challenge on uh, uh, standard Death World settings, I had decided that making one extra set of uh, Miner and Furnace was um, within the budget of handcrafts, I think. This moving around on slow belts for 60 plus hours, I don't think I could ever suggest <laughs> myself to this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well that's why I am uh, streaming and recording this, so that I can, partly for bragging rights, but also just to share the thing with everyone else. The old doing it so you don't have to kind of thing. Should probably be running both of these actually. So now I want to get up to 40 so I can make two more miners, I guess. To be fair, I'm not very fast at all. Still haven't got the 8 hour no spoon achievement. Yeah, I haven't either, actually. Mostly because I've just never bothered, really. I have made a couple of, or started a couple of attempts, but I haven't finished them. Yeah, I should definitely do that sometime. Some more iron, place a miner on coal, and then start automating supply of coal to the power plant. Speaking of which, I should also make some spare power plant parts, because especially in this game, the power plant is going to be closest to the, the enemies. And if the power plant goes down and I don't have any spare parts, 
that means since I can't handcraft anything anymore, um, I won't be able to craft anything anymore. So I also won't be able to get the power back up. And that is game over at that point. played with marathon settings yet. Does it increase resources needed by a set amount? Well, that depends on what you, need by s what you mean by set amount. Uh, one of the earliest things it does is it increases the number of iron gears or plates needed for iron gears from 2 to 4, so it doubles, um, it doubles iron consumption for gears, which is quite significant because these things are used for everything. <laughs> and also it quadruples or... how is it? Uh, right, it increases copper wires for circuits from 3 to 8, which is also quite significant. Uh, okay, with that I think I have enough to make another miner again. Uh, fixed percentage? Yeah, it, it, uh, what it does is it also increases the number of science packs you need for things, like um, stuff like projectile damage, now it costs 400 and then 800 and so on, science packs. Uh, I don't actually know how much that is in, on default settings, but it's quite expensive. Um, and yeah, and then it mostly just increases the uh, the material components for some of these early components. It also doubles the iron consumption for steel. So it does some stuff like that. Does Marathon also slow down in any evolution? I don't think it does. And Marathon Death World certainly increases evolution, rather. I think Death World settings doubles the effect of pollution on evolution. Something like that. Oh, I can actually see it on here. Okay, so I'm about to run out of coal in there. I guess I should pick all this up. Stop mining. And then uh, mine all the coal I can uh, before that runs out. Fill this with all the coal I can. continue the previous question about marathon. It doesn't increase the cost of everything. Um, just a few select things that taken together make quite a big difference. Uh, like for example it also increases... I think this is more than default settings. I'm not actually sure. Uh, the iron for firearm magazines, but if you compare that to red ammo, I think this is exactly the same recipe as in default settings. Only that the steel is more expensive. What is the furthest I have gotten in previous attempts? Um, in attempt 8 or 9 or something, I was about to set up red science or red circuit production when I suddenly got killed by a few biters that made it into my base through through a gap in the turret coverage. So yeah, I was just about to set up blue science then. I had started collecting some oil and started 
I don't know if I'd actually placed oil refineries yet, but at least started a I had, had at least started designing some red circuit production. Uh, last attempt I had gotten past military science and I was starting to produce engines and oil production facilities. But then I died when I was expanding to, or trying to grab an iron expansion because I was running out of iron in the main base. And because of that, this time I am going to be uh, focusing much harder on getting damage upgrades. Uh, also because I have now done a bit of math and spreadsheeting and concluding that uh, in part the, uh, the damage upgrades actually get progressively more powerful not only because the numbers increase but also because they stack multiplicatively with like, the damage bonus from four turrets and the damage bonus for ammo stack by multiplying each other instead of adding each other together which means that you do a lot more so now let's make some belts out of these Lift it up and defender capsules do the same damage per shot as red ammo. Don't have the extra turret bonus, I guess. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. But yeah, they might. Actually, the uh, the research shows, doesn't it? Uh, these, yeah, okay, these do not affect defender capsules, it seems. What about the laser damage upgrades? Where are those even? Oh, there. All right, the icon has changed. So that's... Oh, wait, uh, maybe I looked at it wrong. Okay, it does actually affect the defender capsules. Yeah, okay, so that might be a good thing to use. Also going to need an inserter. for using electric inserters even for this just because they're a bit more efficient or quite a lot more efficient actually than uh, burner inserters so I just need to be careful not to brown out does it indicate turrets get speed boost or not? Um, it does show on the technology uh, which get the bonus and which don't. And uh, yes, turrets do get increased shooting speed from the technologies.
You need to grab this coal here. Sure, it would be nice to have this miner up here right now. I'm using random seeds for restarts? Yes, I'm using a different seed every time I die. That is the permadeath rule that I have set for myself. It must take us four times as expensive? Yeah, probably. But yeah, that might actually be just a flat percentage modifier. I don't think the automation technology is covered by that, because that is still 10 packs. But yeah, most other things probably are, like the turrets for example are, f are 40, so that could probably be 4 times as much. Generate a few to find one that looks reasonable, yeah, I... Uh, I uh, I usually go through quite a few candidate maps before I choose one that I think looks good. This time I actually found a, a good looking one quite quickly. Okay, now I need 20 more plates to put this up. Size silo is 4,000 instead of 1,000. It's gonna take a while, yeah. Well, at that point of the game, I don't think it really matters all that much. Yes, it is going to take longer, but if I survive that long, it shouldn't make much of a difference in the end. burned through half of the fuel already, so I'm gonna want to start automating this. I'm probably gonna do that before I set up another iron miner here. For which I will need... how much? I yeah, probably should do it like this instead. That is 34 belts, which means I need uh, 17 gears, which is, well, 34 times 5 is 100 and 150, 20, so 170. Yeah, I need 17 gears, which is... 68 58 No, 68 plates. Okay, so that's enough for the gears.
Okay, now I can make all the bits I need. Oh yeah, I only needed 34. Okay. Time to set up coal supply. Is the ghost build on the left is all from a blueprint? No. I set that up while I was waiting for the burners to mine the first batch of iron and stuff. So that is another uh, reference that I'm doing, I guess. I'm not importing any blueprints into this. I planned all this out while I was waiting for the miners to produce the first 400 or so plates of iron and coal and whatever else I needed. Because that is like 20 or 30 minutes or so of just standing around waiting for miners to produce enough ore. <coughs> produce enough ore. So, yeah. That's what I use that downtime for, basically. But yeah, I have I've done quite a few attempts now, so I'm getting quite good at just rem remembering all of this from memory. Okay, that is coal supply automated, so I don't need to worry about brownouts anymore. Or blackouts, rather. So now I can focus on setting up more miners. At least, like, yeah, I can I can power up to 10 miners with the one steam engine. So let's do gear or circuits. So that's enough for one miner, which is perfect. I can place one miner on coal or copper and then belt it down here and start setting up a bit of automation here. Usually I need to be a bit more conservative and just save on pollution for a while so that I can get to turret technology and defend myself from the nests, but this time I think I can be a bit more aggressive because these nests are quite far out and there are also a lot of trees absorbing pollution in, be in between. Right, so let's grab that and let's see how much I mean, how many belts I need to pull this down here. Something like that, and that's 65. So say 70 times 5 is 350 plates. No, actually divided by 2 even, because I get 2 for each. So like 120. I almost have that already. So let's get started on some gears. just start building this in the way that I will want to have it later. Let's see. Yeah, 
Well, these line up pretty nice. So then we'll put the iron belt there. So we'll probably want the copper to come in something like this. Approximately. And uh, the thing I'm about to build here is not going to be permanent. But it's going to be what I use to get the first couple of techs and produce the first few turrets and ammo to take out these wider nests. And then I will start transitioning into this base instead. close iron patch uh, yeah there are quite a few I think down here can't see them right now but yeah I, I think there was one up here somewhere and then one up down here so there's quite a good amount of iron close by might need to take out some biter nests in order to get to them but I think I can do that fairly easily Automate movement a bit. I can be built exclusively for getting around. Yes. Uh, yes, once I have got a bit more automation up and running, I will leave some belts like this one, for example. It's going to be a permanent uh, personal transport belt. And that's also why I'm leaving some space in between here. Between uh, those uh, mines or smelters. Uh, yeah, so this one can go like that, or even like that. Wish you luck, yeah, thank you, Empty Brand. I'm probably going to need it. That's another running theme of this challenge is that I keep saying coal when I, need, when I mean copper and copper when I mean coal. Uh, someday maybe I'll learn.
so I should probably place that. Uh, let's place it there. this way. still looking okay. I think I can get away with a bit more automation before I need to research turrets. But not all that much. We don't need all that much more. I actually need to replace this one soon. This one, two and a half K. It's not a lot. Let's move it all the way in like this. Yep, that's plenty of coal. So yeah, now I do need to focus on researching gun turrets and producing turrets and ammo. The first one or two attacks I can probably deal with with just a pistol. But beyond that it gets uh, much more threatening quite quickly. I guess this is going to be the iron line, actually. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, so let's make some more circuits. Want to make two more labs, I think. Enough for two labs.
So now let's see. Yeah, probably already time to clean this up here. I suppose. Some circuits already, okay. Means I can make some servers. See, this should actually go on the other side, this whole thing. So that I'll have the iron output here.
Pollution still okay. That's good. Finally have a bit of basic automation going here. Oh, this needs to be the other way. This needs another inserter. This needs an inserter. Do some science. Or maybe first set up some more miners actually. It would be nice if I could get in the middle here. I guess I can move this actually.
maps green, there are areas highlighted red. What is that? Pollution? Let's see what you see. It's always overlay in my game. Uh, yeah, that is pollution. And uh, it's there's a button over here. You can toggle that on and off. As well as a bunch of other useful things. Yeah, that's pollution. Okay, so to support that miner we need some more furnaces. the buttons yeah I think they're a pretty new addition actually somewhat at least Now it's definitely time to do some science. I guess easiest it's to just set it up like here. So, let's see. Maybe even something like this. So I'm, making, I'm gonna need one more assembler actually. Let's make sure I can reach it. And then one, two. power. Let's see, the spawners have not yet been hit by pollution, which is good. It means we're not going to get attacked quite yet. Just a little in my game. Every area that I've explored is already fully polluted. Yep. That's what happens in late game. Yeah, this is a very little pollution yet. In my later game stages, uh, like in my later game saves, this is just like the pollution cloud over the base is just bright red. And then it covers like everything else as well. Almost to the edge of the uh, explored map. I think that's gonna finish turrets, yeah. Looks like it. So then we need more gears for the turrets. Pause these for a bit. These two. Because um, I also need to make some uh, uh, steam engines. Or at least one. 
So I'm gonna need 10 gears for that. Speaking of which, I should also make some more spare parts for the power plant, as I was talking about earlier. So I need 5 plus 4 times 2, so 18 of these. Then I need one spare pump. Two steam engines and one spare boiler. Place one steam engine. Uh, I'm not going to do more research right now. Okay, didn't really. Wasn't much in there. Okay. Then I can start producing turrets. Get three more gears, come on. Three. So that's enough for two turrets. And now I need to get down there. Should probably just place least one turret down by the power plant actually because that's probably going to be hit first see so yeah, I'll wait for this one switch this over to ammo for a bit Actually, not going to need more coal for the power plant <coughs> just yet, because that one can actually power one boiler fully. I guess in this challenge, exploring consists of checking the map gen preview. Well, yeah, in partly, yeah. That actually does cover most of the exploration I've done so far in my attempts. But yeah, other than that you of course put down some l some radars and let those explore for you. some more turrets.
Let's go back to miners. Oh, we even have one more. Okay. So let's go place that miner. And how do I get through there? Can't help but laugh at the method of getting around, yeah. <laughs> it is quite silly, isn't it? Right, I need to hand feed gears in there. Whoops. Seven, fourteen. Yeah, with two more here, I can actually support ten miners already. Okay, we have some turrets. Make some more assemblers. And then back to miners. And let's also set up a permanent ammo assembler down here. It's probably good. Uh, do I have more miners? No. I right, need to activate these. Maybe not this one actually. But definitely this one at least. in here. Oh, the 
wood in there. Um, okay, this can now turn all the wood into powerfuls. Oh, and this can actually move there. Right. I should also place these turrets, otherwise not gonna, not gonna do much good. So uh, yeah, let's get to up here. Gun slot so that the ammo goes back into my inventory when I drop it. Okay, that is 10. And that's all I can really support with the furnaces I have without mining more stone. And yeah, I found that 10 is a pretty good place, um, pretty good pace for this uh, initial phase of the game. So I think I'm going to be happy with that. Set these two up. First, make one more assembler. And I can keep one assembler in my pocket. And let's make two. See if I can find a way to dump this iron ore. Yay! Okay. So now I basically just need to stand here and wait until I have enough ammo to take out these nests. Ammo, turrets, and uh, repair packs. Actually, I need to do make those two. But yeah, I now have pretty much all the automation I need. I guess I can make some science, like maybe get started on some more damage. It's going to be quite expensive, but... Hmm. Might be able to afford it, actually. going to require a lot of iron gears. So maybe I should move this down a bit.
This might also just work fine. Or I could just move these down here, I suppose. Also an option. some space to make it easier to move through and then we'll need here's science science yeah it's a bit awkward but it's fine We need one, two, three, four more. Okay, and now I just need to wait for ammo and turrets and repair packs. peaking above capacity right now. Hmm. That's not great. It will eventually calm down once some of these get saturated. Still has a way to go. 
Wait, I don't actually need to pick those up. And I probably don't need all of these belts in my inventory either. So I can just get rid of some of them to get this to, to uh, saturate sooner. for that and uh, less power is consumed for those things military finished let's get started on some damage even if it's a long way out So I want to get to about 20 repair packs before I go out and attack one of these. And yeah, this one's going to be first because it's the closest. Hmm, interesting that they came up here and not at the power plant. Maybe this has been attacked already? Let's see actually. No? Those were the first kills. Yeah, this has not been attacked, apparently. <laughs> Am I actually going to need more copper? Maybe. The main bottleneck right now is... Ammo, which is iron. I'm going to need to replace those miners. Okay, I should get take care of them before they eat too many of the belts. seen that coming. Well, I can recover from that without too much issue. Did I remotely view the attack location? I go into map view. 
the default hotkey is just M, but I have also bound it to my thumb mouse button. And then I can just move around like this. It is limited by how much you can see. Like, this is my vision range normally. Uh, but you can also extend it with the radars. Which I am going to do uh, as soon as I can. But right now radars are a bit too power hungry. get a little alert thingy here that you can click to jump directly to the attack location in map view. Didn't know you can zoom that far into map, yeah, it's also a relatively new addition. Probably a few years old at this point, but it hasn't always been there. Wait, I don't need that first, I need this first. But yeah, these are the kinds of things that you learn when you do, um, in particular, a walking less run. I guess the word run is a bit ironic in that case. But anyway, when you do a playthrough without walking, these are, are the kinds of tricks that you learn. And also things like you can do stuff like this. Whee! Oh! <laughs> that dealt the copper out. Yeah, you can actually reconfigure things remotely even beyond your usual reach range. And you can even do that with uh, circuits and stuff like that. It's quite useful at times. Uh, so let's see here. I'm gonna need a few more repair packs. That's probably going to be enough, for a start at least. Right, I need to set that miner up again. Actually, I already, I already have 5 or 600 ammo, so now I just need to make the turrets I need, and then I can go out on a nest killing campaign. So I need turrets, for that I need gears. And also copper, I suppose. Speaking of which, let's go pick that up. Shortcuts and stuff this game has, yeah. yeah there's a lot of stuff, even in uh, just the base vanilla game. People like to talk about uh, the quality of life, so called mods. Um, Makes things easier, but I think just the base game has most of the stuff you need already. So. I mean, I have put, at this point, I think, just over 
1400 hours into the, this game and yeah that is all completely without any of these kinds of uh, so-called quality of life mods so yeah the game definitely is very user-friendly already then on the other hand I also have made a so-called quality of life mod myself so maybe I shouldn't be so critical about it but yeah still my point still stands that the game is very user friendly already so at least in my opinion Disable this here, maybe or maybe not. Yeah, sure. So that I can just get this copper into this one here and get the tarts I need. Made a vanilla guy for the vast majority of games, similar games to like oxygen not included in a Rim World that are often heavily modded. Yeah. I haven't played RimWorld, I have played a lot of Oxygen Not Included, or... Yeah. Nowhere near as much as Factorio, but yeah. Still quite a bit. Uh, I guess actually this one consuming most of the copper. Um, yeah, I haven't actually tried any mods for Oxygen Not Included either. But yeah, that that interface definitely has is a bit more rough than Factorio, I think. Not to say that it's bad, but yeah, it has a f quite a few more rough edges than the Factorio UI does, I think. And not just like graphics-wise or anything, just in terms of interaction efficiency, I suppose. Oh wow. Maybe not quite that many years. So yeah, that's gonna get me up to 12 turrets. I should even go to 14. Why not? So this will get me to 14 dirts. It's a pretty good number. Oh nice, a little more or Initially with the UI, graphics are nice though. I would agree for toys the most intuitive to get started. Maybe. Yeah, Oxygen Not Included definitely has a very pretty graphics with the drawings and that uh, that is a lot of the charm of the game, I think. Many of the clay games have that kind of charming aesthetic, I think. Which is not a bad thing, I mean Pretty graphics is the selling point of a game, so and uh, oh, and I certainly has very charming graphics. But yeah, Victorio I think is has a bit more polished UI. So yeah, I have 14 turrets. 800 ammo and 20 repair packs, so I'm feeling ready to go out and take out a few nests. Meanwhile the base can continue producing ammo and science. 
And yeah, we should be good to go from there. I guess there are actually two nests here. Okay, so let's, let's take this one first. Oh, I guess so that's why they came up here and not to the power plant. That explains it. Alright, so let's go down first. Just because it's the closest. Where are the icons to the right of the hotbar? In interface settings, you can set the active quick bars. It's this one. Like if I turn down, that turns it to one. I like having it at three. And then this is the shortcut bar. Uh, if you're new to the game, you might not have unlocked that yet. I think that appears when you research uh, construction robots, and then it's permanently uh, it's permanently shown after that. But if you're new to gaze, <coughs> if you're new to the game, you may not have reached that point yet. Yeah, these are some shortcuts, like for enabling and disabling extra info mode, and some shortcuts for blueprint stuff, which also only becomes relevant when you have uh, uh, construction robots, or that's when it gets really relevant. Um, like you can still use blueprints for planning like I have done here, but it really becomes relevant when you have robots. So now I'm going to stop talking and fix our combat.
things. I mean, <coughs> sometimes I can advance a bit more aggressively than I have now. But yep, here the bombs are really making things difficult. Usually the worms are so tightly packed together that they uh, deal more damage than I can uh, repair with my repair packs. I think I want to deal with this nest right now. I think I want to take the other ones first. And I lost a few more turrets there than I would have liked to. So I still have 400 ammo, so I spent like 400 on this attack here. Probably lost some of it in turrets that got destroyed. Okay, so I cannot see the base from here. I'm gonna go back and refill the ammo. Take the east nest there. Yeah, I lost three turrets. And that is three more than I would have liked. But yeah, so uh, also the sound again is mega loud compared to voice music. Okay, yeah, some other people have said that too. Maybe I should turn it down. Game effects, I guess it's these. Maybe something like that. Okay, I'm back to a thousand ammo. Let's make some replacement turrets. Oh yeah, I <laughs> also need way more repair packs. Yeah. So yeah, good thing I didn't try to make another push because I 
probably would have run out of repair packs. Okay, those have run out of ammo. So good thing I have spare parts for the power plant. Uh, so let's see, I need a replacement or two even. Replacement, yeah, replacements for all of those basically. Uh, oh, now they're here too. Wow. Yeah, I guess I really made them angry. On the bright side, those belts aren't important at all. Uh, oh, so these are not aggroed yet. Fortunately. So I guess I need some turrets here too. Oh, they didn't actually take out the steam engines. That's very good. So now I just need to hurry down there and replace the turrets before they come again. see this on another attempt. So good luck. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks and good night and see you next time or whenever that happens to be. Thanks for sticking around. Okay, that should keep that safe for a while. And here comes some more of them. But this should not be a problem. Yep. So that's gonna hold for like another 25 attacks of that size.
So yeah, next I need repair packs. And yeah, a few more turrets too. Since I spent five of them or seven of them on static defenses here. So let's make repair packs. Can probably just pour all of that into repair packs because I'm probably going to need them if I want to take more than one of these nests. Belts to move around. Mm, should be good enough for a while. Yeah, I probably do need more copper mining. Uh, can actually support two miners over these two furnaces, but... So with this, uh, if I want to go up to 7 again, that's 140, so that's yeah, that's going to be way too long to wait. It's going to take um, like 300 seconds, which is 5 minutes. I don't feel like waiting 5 minutes for these turrets. So I actually need to put more furnaces here in order to support those. Yeah, even this won't be able to fully keep up with that. 
But at least it increases the copper production by 50%. Alright, I'm back after 14 turrets and a thousand ammo. Exactly. So, yep, let's go back out at another attempt on these nests. These trees are going to be awkward. Oh, and these cliffs are going also to be awkward. Uh, that might get sketchy. Should still be doable. Might be a bit inefficient on ammo though. I guess the, the more time you spend not shooting spawners, the more Anyways, the spawners will spawn. So it's good if you can keep the time taken to a minimum whenever possible.
over. That is too close. Ah. have a much better angle here. So probably want to pick up all these belts because I probably will, you know, I'll be coming back this way. So I won't be coming back through here. At least I still have plenty of ammo. did take quite a few repair packs though. Yeah, the rest of these should be a bit easier to work with, I think. These trees and cliffs really made this very awkward here. So, let's see here. Should be enough to reach all of it. Exactly. 
be enough even. So this time I didn't lose any turrets, which is good. Means I don't lose the ammo they contain also, which can be quite a setback if they have a lot of ammo in them. Which is also why I keep uh, removing ammo after I put it in, so that if they die they don't take a whole stack of ammo with them. for a much more efficient attack here without a whole lot of trees and cliffs in the way there are still quite a lot of worms here these turrets before I attack. Oh. Getting attacked by the mine. Three biters, that's not a big attack. Maybe they're coming from here? That's worrying. Or maybe it's these ones. some radars soon. Okay, so this looks like a good spot to move in. So let's go.
Okay, so I lost one turret there, but at least there was no ammo in the turret when I lost it. Which is the most important thing. but no ammo lost in the turret on this one got close. Okay, all the turrets are repaired. Just about 400 ammo, so I can take one more nest in this push before I need to go take a pit stop at the base. So I guess I'll go through here. this belt here? <laughs> Seems not. Okay. probably can leave the belts because I'm become <coughs> I'll be coming back this way. So yeah. We are at medium biter evolution now. Nice a lot of worms. Probably want to move in from this side, but yeah, I don't want to get that close to this other nest. So I think I'm gonna have to make do here.
supposed to kill the worm. It's repaired. Yeah, no, I only have what? Like 200 ammo remaining, so oh yeah, I definitely cannot assault this one before going back. So, time to get back to base. Okay, now we're at 3% medium biters already. Let's see how I'm gonna need to. Uh, need to get on the research and get some damage upgrades. I think I'm going to call it here for tonight because I need to go to sleep. But yeah, so next session we'll continue clearing out these uh, these couple of close by nests here, and then start to transition over to the permanent base. Feeling pretty good about this start so far, at least. And uh, the options for expansion are a bit better this time around, I think. As long as I don't dawdle for too long and just spend iron on stuff I don't need. Because I really need to grab some iron expansions early on. So that I can keep producing ammo and all that. Also this time I, uh, I am armed with a bit more knowledge, specifically about the iron efficiency of different kinds of ammo. Yeah, it turns out yellow ammo is actually a lot more uh, iron efficient at least than I was assuming that it was. Even for 
the medium uh, and also uh, at, at times for the big biters even. And then of course efficiency is not everything but it is an important part at least. are doing uh, still 20-ish. It's good. No other nests in range right now. I guess these are getting angry. And maybe something else out in the fog here. So it might be time now to drop down a radar and try to get some vision out this way. Turrets, very nice. And another thousand ammo. Also very good. Oh, I guess that's actually limited now. So, yeah. So, let's bump that limit up to two thousand. Move this over to making radars. One is enough now. Grab the turrets, grab the ammo. Can bump this up to 500. Put some gears in there. Oh yeah, and I'm going to need more repair packs too. That's enough for a hundred of them, even. Probably don't need all that much. And yeah, let's place down the radar. Here's probably a good spot, I guess. covers... or does it? Yeah, that covers the power plant too. It's good, so now I can get some vision out around here. want a few more labs too because for this technology I can actually support six labs with these two assemblers
Okay. So, yeah, one more thing I was thinking was to bump this up to at least 100, maybe even like 200, because I'm gonna need about 100 just to set up one smelting array. Uh, like one of these. Off a side is 50 inserters. So, yeah, let's, let's go to 200. I will also bump this up to like 500. Let these keep working while I'm away. Oh, it looks like this is done. Set this in there. And then I can dismantle this. Call it there for today. And I'll be back another time with a continuation of this, where we're going to take down some more nests, probably starting with this one, and then maybe also this one, and then start transitioning into building this bootstrap base here. But yeah, that is going to be the next time, so thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you then. Have a good one.